there is one game we all play and that game is called real life not everyone is good at it but some of us are real life is an open world game with endless possibilities and after all only the uncultured spend their day-to-day -day life in just one country so join me in my life of leisure as I explore the best games for the handheld around the world. So I now find myself in Bryce Canyon in Utah, which I must say is the nicest place I have been in the USA so far. It is about a hundred times better than that AAA overrated Grand Canyon and if I had to go back and revisit one once again I would choose Bryce Canyon every single time. This place is truly spectacular and in terms of natural beauty it is up there with Niagara Falls. Anyway, enough with blowing smoke up Bryce Canyon's ass. let's talk gaming. Speaking of things in the past that have caught me by surprise and gone on to become some of my favourites, nothing fits that mould better than Xenoblade Chronicles. Originally released for the Nintendo Wii back in Japan in 2010, this massive JRPG nearly never received a Western release at all. Thankfully, a fan campaign known as Operation Rainfall formed to persuade Nintendo of America that this game, along with The Last Story and Pandora's Tower, massively deserved Western releases. Due to this campaign, us Europeans received the game in 2011 and the Americans got the game in 2012. What the bloody hell was going on, Nintendo? Us Europeans having the privilege of getting a JRPG before the Yanks? That's uncharted territory, but bloody fantastic, I must say. I'll give my full review on this game very shortly, but first I want to outline some of my feelings about the game. I have loved this game for quite some time, and I feel it has finally been getting some of the credit it deserves in the last few years. After I played through this game back in 2011, it instantly became one of my favourite JRPGs of all time. I remember telling friends about this relatively obscure game and have them literally laugh in my face when I told them that this game on the Wii I had was enjoyable and epic as Final Fantasy VII. I literally remember telling everyone to play it and pretty much no one I knew would even give the game a chance. They were all too busy at the time playing their AAA tripe on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 to give a game a chance on an underpowered console like the Wii. The Wii I suppose in their eyes was reserved for the old people's homes and children's parties. Anyway, a few years have passed now and the Nintendo marketing monster is now fully behind Xenoblade and have been pushing the wonders of this game into people's faces so the whole bloody world can see. My mouth literally dropped open on both occasions when I saw the new 3DS would launch with Xenoblade Chronicles 3D, then later again when I saw the lead character Shulk battle it out with Link in the Super Smash Bros. 4 trailer. Xenoblade was now more than just an obscure game, it was the defining game of the new Nintendo 3DS. Anyway, so now let us talk about one of the best handheld games out there today and my personal favourite game of the Wii 360 PS3 generation. Yeah! Xenoblade Chronicles is an action role-playing game developed by Monolith Soft and published by Nintendo for the Wii. The game is part of the Xeno Meta series, although the story is completely separate from other games in the series, similarly to that of which of the Final Fantasy games. Other games in the Xeno series include Xenogears on the PS1, the Xeno Saga on the PS2, and Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U. But discussion about all these games is for another time, so now let's talk a bit about the story of Xenoblade. Yeah! The story of Xenoblade is one of the many captivating elements of the game and driving forces in what made the experience so enjoyable for me. There are constant twists and turns that keep you on your toes and dying to know what happens next. The game is set in a world that has nothing but endless ocean. This was until two great titanic gods, the Bionis and the Mechonis, came into existence. These two gods fought a timeless battle until, with one final strike, only their corpses remained, forever locked in combat. Many eons later, these two gods became landscapes and the homes to multiple forms of life. 
However, the key to differences between these gods was that the Bionis became home to organic life, such as humans, animals, etc., whilst conversely, the Maconis became home to mechanical humanoid life forms instead. The people of the two landscapes ended up in a huge war, and throughout the game, you play as a citizen who lives on the Bionis known as Shulk. Shulk is special, as he is able to wield a key weapon used by the Hogs in a battle against the attacking Maconis people known as the Monado. The Monado is a mystical sword linked to the Bionis, which grants visions of the future to the wielder. The Monado can be seen on the box art to both the Wii and new 3DS versions of the game. Anyway, Shulk, now in possession of the Monado, is joined in his battle against Maconis by several companions. There is Ryan, who is Shulk's childhood friend and headstrong member of the Defence Force, Dunban, a former wielder of the Monado and the brother of Shulk's other childhood friend, Fiora, Sharla, a medic and sniper from Colony 6, Melia Antiqua, Crown Princess of the High Entia and a High Entia Hom hybrid, and Ricky, a member of the Nupon who is chosen as the hero of his village. Other important characters include Dixon, who is Shulk's mentor, Mulka, a cowardly soldier who fought alongside Dunban and wished to wield the Monado for himself, Edil, the leader of the Machina, and Alvis, a mysterious man who aids Shulk on his journey. All of this I am telling you may just sound like the generic anime style JRPG bullcrap, but I am really telling you, this game and the story is really something special and each of these characters all play a key part in the game unfolding. I could talk about the story with you all day long, however I really do not want to go into it in too much detail as I do not want to spoil the plot of this fantastic bloody game. Speaking of the plot, without partaking in any of the side quests, or even the game's second quest mode, to beat this game, just partaking in the main story, I racked up 80 bloody hours alone. This game is the definition of an epic when it comes to gaming. In my opinion, as good as the story is, there has to be a lot more girth than that to a game for me to enjoy it. I hate most modern games for their constant cinematics and flashy graphics in which they use to mask their underwhelming gameplay. Xenoblade Chronicles on the other hand hits the ball out the park in terms of gameplay as well as story. Basically, like many RPGs, the player controls one character out of a party of three. Thankfully with this game, no crappy motion controls are implemented into the mechanics of this game, even in the Wii version. You can play the entire thing using just the classic controller. As the player, you get to traverse a truly massive open world in which you are seamlessly free to navigate the many huge interconnected environments. A day and night cycle is also implemented into the game's mechanics, and the time of day often affects the in-game events, quests you are involved in, the strengths of enemies and items in which are available to you. So with this massive world, the game encourages exploration. However, to easily stay on track with the story, many areas offer something the game calls landmarks, which aid the player in traversing the land by serving as warp points. These allow the player to instantly return to any landmark point they have been previously, so the player can truly enjoy this huge world at their own leisure. So like most RPGs, exploration, quest completion and item collection are large parts of the gameplay. However, I personally feel this particular game does it with a lot more finesse than most. The exploration is deep. So deep in fact, you can generally make decisions and pick and choose what you want to do throughout this gaming experience. The player is encouraged to explore the large environments which generally allow the player to visit whatever can be seen on the horizon. During these massive treks, the player can also collect crystals which gives the player access to a multifaceted gem crafting minigame, allowing for the creation of gems that may increase battle stats when equipped. Many in-game systems affect the general flow of gameplay, such as the affinity system which tracks the relationship between characters and locations in the game. Location affinity tracks the interpersonal relationships between all of the game's named characters, depicting to which degrees they all get along with one another and a town's general perception of the player's controllable party. Completing quests can alter perception of the characters and open up additional story sequences. Besides location affinity, there is also party affinity, which is strictly the level of affection between each party member, ranging from indifference to love. 
These affinities can be raised by having characters participate in battles together, giving gifts or using the heart to heart system. These heart to hearts are intimate moments between two characters that can show more of a character's personality, history or thoughts and can be initiated by having a certain level of affection between them. The affinity system ties into how efficient characters work together in battle and gem crafting. The game also has an extensive customization system which includes changing the character's outfits and weapons. These changes are directly reflected in the game, appearing in the field and even during scripted cutscenes. One of the most important elements to any JRPG is the game's battle system. Xenoblade Chronicles has a real-time action-based battle system where the player manually moves the current lead character in real-time and party members will auto-attack when enemies enter their own attack radius. Whilst fighting, you can manually input attacks called arts in which may also be performed by the player but in a limited fashion. Battle arts are only available after a cooldown period that occurs after every use while character specific talents only become available after enough auto attacks are executed. Both party members and enemies have a finite amount of health points and attacks deplete this value. Like in most traditional JRPGs, combat is won when all enemies lose their HP and the game can be lost if the player's character lose all their HP and has no means of being revived. Again, like many traditional games of this genre, winning battles earn the player experience points which allows the characters to grow stronger by leveling up and also learning new arts. Several other systems are present to affect the flow of battle. The party gauge slowly fills as the party members successfully land hits on the enemy players, and filling the gauge allows the player to chain multiple attacks together for extra damage. Going back slightly to the story of the game, the Monado also plays a key role within most of the game's battles. The game has a vision system which essentially lets Shulk see glimpses of enemies' future attacks which also factors into battles. With knowledge of an enemy's potentially dangerous attack, the player can prevent it from happening by alerting a teammate allowing the player to activate one of their arts or by using an art of their own to stop the attack. Whilst this battle system may sound a little bit contrived whilst trying to explain it, it is actually fairly simple overall and allows the player to indulge in fast paced, fairly action orientated battles and even have a little bit of fun when having to grind if one particular boss appears too difficult. So, great story, great characters, a huge world and a fun battle system. What else could you ask for? Great music of course. All the game's music sets the tone and ties into all the environments of the great world. There are tons upon tons of memorable tracks However, none are quite as memorable as the track you hear whilst traversing Gore Plains. This music has pretty much become the song people now associate with Xenoblade. The track is so good it was used in the Shulk trailer for Smash 4. And the music instantly puts me in a great mood whenever I hear it playing, whether it be in Xenoblade Chronicles or Smash Bros. One of the only downsides to the game, if you even want to call it that, would be the graphics. Obviously at the game's time of release, we were deep into the HD era of gaming and Xenoblade looks more like a game you would see on the GameCube rather than the game you would see on the 360 or PS3. This didn't affect my personal appreciation for the game, however I do see how this could potentially affect the game's enjoyment for some low-brow idiots. Sadly, you will always have morons who prefer style over substance, who will continually hold back the development of fun gameplay in favour of being able to see a few extra blades of grass in Assassin's Creed. Apart from the underpar graphics at the time, a couple of other flaws that come to mind regarding the game was for some stupid reason, Monolith Soft programmed the playable characters to repeat the same nonsense phrases over and over again. This can be a tad annoying the thousandth time you've heard it. Listen to this soundbite to see exactly what I'm talking about. The other small minor complaint is sometimes in the game I found myself doing unnecessary grinding in order to advance. Maybe you could say that it's a core mechanic of JRPGs, or maybe you could just blame my own laziness for not partaking in enough side quests. Either way, I thought it added a bit of unnecessary fat to the game. But regardless of all this, I am now just being pernickety and trying to appear a little bit impartial. Regardless of these minor minor flaws, Xenoblade Chronicles isn't just one of the best RPGs I've ever played. It is one of the best games I've played, period. 
I think it speaks volumes alone to have a man on YouTube who mainly reviews retro games to speak up about this one's quality. By now I am sure you all know how jaded I am regarding modern day gaming, so if I am giving this one the nod, you really should take my word on it and check this one out. It is very, very special. So whether you want to play it on the Wii or the 3DS, make sure you play this one soon. You certainly will not regret it. Cheerio! A massive shout out to my Patreons for supporting my work on this channel, Mad Ape Productions and Jarrett Tolzian among them. If you are new to my channel and enjoy my work, then subscribe and click one of the annotations to see more. Ta-ta and farewell!